So, how long do you think we'll be here? I'm not talking to you. You know what? We are so screwed! Thought you weren't talking to me. Is Transformers 1 the revitalization that the franchise desperately needed? Or is it just another entry destined to be forgotten among the metal clanking noise of its predecessors? As one of the most acclaimed films in the franchise with a near perfect audience score, it's certainly making waves. But how does a movie that shines so bright with positive reviews end up crashing at the box office? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. At its heart, Transformers 1 explores the deep, once brotherly bond between two of the franchise's iconic characters, Optimus Prime, then known as Orion Pax, and Megatron, or D-16 as he's known in this movie, and the tragic fallout that leads them to become sworn enemies. Set on the metallic planet Cybertron, the film opens before the Great War. Orion Pax, a miner, dreams of something bigger than the monotonous drudgery of the Energon pits. Together with his close friend D-16 and a ragtag group of allies, including Alita-1 and the ever-jovial B-127, Orion embarks on a quest to find the Matrix of Leadership, a sacred artifact that can restore Cybertron's lifeblood. As Orion uncovers the corrupt and oppressive system that has doomed the lower class Autobots to endless labor, his ideologies start to clash with D-16's growing thirst for power. This tension ultimately culminates in an epic confrontation between the two friends who stand at opposite ends of a revolution that threatens to tear Cybertron apart. Sounds a lot like the Russian Revolution, but hey, I'm not a historian. The emotional center of the film is undeniably the arc of Megatron. Drawing heavily from his comic book origins, we witness his transformation from an idealistic revolutionary to a power-hungry warlord. If you're here for character depth, surprisingly enough, Transformers 1 delivers and does so quite beautifully. And yes, before you ask, the action is still as jaw-droppingly cool as you'd expect from a Transformers movie. Transformers 1 is without a doubt the best Transformers movie we've seen since the original animated film in 1986, at least according to the hardcore fans who are buzzing about it. Josh Cooley, known for Toy Story 4, injects the film with a fresh energy and sharp script writing that's been missing from the live action films. No more endless explosions and incomprehensible plots. I'm looking at you, Michael Bay. Instead, we get a well-paced, emotionally resonant story with action scenes that are fast, well choreographed, and impactful. The standout, however, is the exploration of Autobot society, a rigid caste system where the elite primes hold all the power while the lower class transformers toil in the mines. It's not just robots hitting each other for two hours. There's actual commentary on class struggle. This subtle touch adds depth to the film's narrative, which many probably didn't expect from a Transformers movie. I sure as hell didn't, but I thoroughly enjoyed this aspect. It's not every day where you get cogent and nuanced commentary about class struggle without a healthy dose of DEI. And let's not forget the beautiful animation. The CGI is sleek, and the designs of Cybertron are striking, a glinting world of hyper-realistic skyscrapers and jagged landscapes. The sound design and music score complement the action, drawing you into each climactic moment. For a franchise long criticized for its loudness and incoherence, this is a breath of fresh air. Now here's the million dollar question. Why, despite the rave reviews, did Transformers 1 underperform at the box office? In its opening weekend, it pulled in a meager 24.6 million domestically, losing out to Beetlejuice Beetlejuice and only managed a disappointing $39 million worldwide. While the fans loved it, the general audience stayed away, so what went wrong? Well, first off, the marketing campaign for Transformers 1 was a mess. The trailers were lighthearted, emphasizing humor and action, 
but failing to communicate the emotional depth and the tragedy that lies at the film's core. Optimus and Megatron sharing a joke in the trailer? Come on! It's like marketing The Godfather as a rom-com because Vito Corleone smiles in one scene. Fans expecting high-stakes, emotionally charged drama might have skipped out because the trailer made the film look like just another kiddie flick. And speaking of the target demographic, Paramount seriously miscalculated here. The film was aggressively marketed toward children and families, but only 36% of the opening weekend audience were families. The rest? Mostly adult male fans under 25 who grew up with the original series. Had they leaned into this nostalgia and marketed the film more as a gritty prequel aimed at an older crowd, they might have seen a better turnout. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy with a keyboard and a passion for movies. There's no avoiding the larger issue though. The Transformers franchise as a whole is in decline. After reaching its commercial peak between 2011 and 2014 with films like Age of Extinction raking in over 1 billion, the series has been on a downward slope. Transformers Rise of the Beasts grossed a modest $440 million worldwide, a stark contrast to the earlier financial triumphs. Audiences are simply less interested in giant robots duking it out on the big screen. The decision to turn to animation was a bold one, and perhaps it could have paid off if the film had been given the right push or maybe made into an anime a la Mobile Suit Gundam. Unfortunately, Transformers 1 feels like a step in the right direction, but it may be too little too late. With diminishing box office returns and waning interest in the franchise, it's hard to see this as the start of a new animated era for the Transformers. Here's a wild thought, maybe Transformers 1 can still pull off a comeback. After all, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse opened to underwhelming box office numbers, but went on to become a sleeper hit, eventually winning an Oscar for Best Animated Feature. The stellar reviews and near-perfect audience scores suggest Transformers 1 has the potential to gain traction over time, particularly if word of mouth spreads. However, it's worth noting that Spider-Verse had the advantage of releasing during the Christmas season, whereas Transformers 1 finds itself sandwiched between blockbusters like Beetlejuice Beetlejuice and Joker Folie a Deux, both of which had underwhelming box office returns. Let's just hope people start realizing that there's more than one animated movie worth seeing this year, and maybe Transformers 1 can ride the wave of positive reviews to box office success. So should you rush out to see Transformers 1? Well, if you're a longtime fan of the franchise or you grew up with the original animated series, absolutely. This is the most thoughtful, well-executed Transformers film in years. It's an emotional, action-packed thrill ride that brings depth to characters long reduced to smashing and yelling on screen. However, if you've been put off by the franchise in the past, you might find it hard to get on board with this one. Still, despite its flaws, Transformers 1 is a film that dares to ask the big questions about friendship, power, and the devastating consequences of war, all things that are extremely relevant in 2024. Who knew that a movie about robots could get so deep? So if you're in the mood for a mix of punchy action and surprisingly emotional storytelling, give it a shot. After all, how often do you get to see Optimus Prime and Megatron as BFFs before everything goes tits up? Let's just hope the franchise can learn from its marketing missteps. And if not, well, there's always Netflix, I guess. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Transformers 1? And where do you see the series going from here? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie.